All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Plackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing <clears throat> Prince of the Blood by Raymond E. Feist. This is part of his Rift War saga universe of some 25 odd novels. This is, I think, the fifth one in the series. At least it was the fifth one published. <clears throat> I think chronologically it's also the fifth one. Might be wrong about that. Came out in 1989. In fact, I remember exactly, I've only read this once, and it was back in 1989 when I was younger. And I remember exactly where I bought the book and the city I was in when I read the book. I was in, I bought it from the, um, I think it was called the Chapel Square Mall in New Haven, Connecticut. And I read it in Connecticut, New Haven. And, and so whenever I think, think of this book, I think of uh, that time of my life. Anyway, um, I remember enjoying it then, Raymond E. Feist, back in the late 80s along with David Eddings and Terry Brooks. They were the big, huge, best-selling fantasy writers, and I collected all of their stuff. But then I stopped collecting Raymond Feist. Um, you know, there, just, there was so many books. Well, but, but then again, I continued collecting Terry Brooks, and Terry Brooks wrote more books. But anyway, after rereading this, because I really enjoyed my reread of this, I went ahead and ordered... The entire rest of the Rift War Saga series. Because I think I've got, right now I've got, um, let's see. Looks like I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. About 15 of the novels. And I think I ordered about, God, there's probably 35 novels in this series. Because I, I know I ordered about 20 more. And they'll, they'll be re arriving soon and I will put those in my September book haul. Um... I really enjoyed my reread of this. Uh, it's now this is the author's preferred edition, which I which came out about ten years after the version that I originally read. I don't remember the differences between the two, but if you read the foreword in this book, apparently there are a lot of differences. So the back of the 1989 version is quite a bit different than this version here. Um, but Raymond E. Feist said that uh, they sort of rushed this into production and there was a lot of things he wanted to change that he couldn't. And then he changed them and now I've got the preferred edition. Okay, so Rift War Saga, great fantasy series. Um, magician, Magician Master, classic fantasy. Some of my favorite from when I was a kid. The entire series follows pretty much the same characters. Um, here we get Prince Arutha, Arutha, I don't know how you say it. It starts with his twin sons, Boric and Erland. And, um, now Prince Arutha was one of the young heroes of the first four books. Now he's older, he's got sons that are in their late teens, early twenties, and they're kind of carefree, cavalier, reckless dudes, they're twins. In fact, we open up the story with them in a tavern picking a fight with just some thugs just because it's fun to pick fights with thugs and it's a deadly fight i mean it's like it's like swords and everything and their dad doesn't like this their dad is sick of them just being so reckless and devil may care and not giving a crap about their futures or anything like that however these two twins are pretty popular they're pretty engaging their I love the interplay between them and their two younger siblings I mean they are adored by their younger brother and their younger sister and the back and forth between those characters at the beginning of the book is is very cool very good character building but Arutha the father he's still just like these two boys of mine are just troublemakers um they're good guys they just they're just bored and they want to just cause problems. And um, so he decides to send them as ambassadors out to 
the kingdom of Kesh. Um, because there's some stuff going on political wise that they just need to, they need to go, you know, put out the fire or whatever. And he's like, I'll send my two sons along with some of my other advisors. And we'll, this will make them, this will be a growing up experience for them. But before the two boys could even go on the, um, trip, there's an assassination attempt on Boric and, uh, because well, I won't tell you why, but anyway, this speeds up the process of these boys growing up a little bit and getting out on this trip to Kesh. And some of the characters that go on them go on the trip with them, like Jimmy the Hand. Now, Jimmy the Hand was one of the more popular characters in the first four books. He was a young street thief, thug turned good guy. Um, very, very one of the best fantasy characters ever written, to be honest with you. But Jimmy the Hand is now sort of an advisor. He's older now. He's sort of an advisor to Prince Arutha. And Prince Arutha t sends Jimmy the Hand with his young sons on this trip. He also sends Locklear, who is a kind of a another fighting guy, warrior guy. He sends that guy out with him. And they go on this trip to Kesh. And among, along the way, they stop at... Um, I'm not giving away spoilers that aren't on the back. Seems like I'm saying a lot about the plot, but I'm only saying about the plot in the first 50, 25 pages, right? So on the way to Kesh, they stop by an island where Pug lives. Now, Pug is the star of the first four novels. He's a magician. And we get to meet Pug and interact with Pug, which is cool. But we also get to meet Pug's daughter, Gamina, who gets a... Sorry about that. I'll, I'll edit my burp out. God, that was gross. Anyway, um, we get to meet Gamina, who has a bit of a relationship with one of our adventuring people. It, it, does she get into does she get into a relationship with Boric or Erland, the two youngsters? Does she get into a relationship with Jimmy the Hand or Locklear? Who or what or why? But it's a very interesting dynamic that happens once this relationship starts. But then as they travel further, cause she goes on the quest, she goes further on the quest, but then as we travel further on the quest to Kesh on this ambassadorship mission, our, our characters split up, things happen. Stuff goes ass over teapot really quick and our characters get split up into different, and they have different adventures. Like Boric and Erland, who've grown up together as twins and always been together, they're split up and they go on vastly, wildly different adventures at this point. And um, I will tell you, of the characters I've mentioned, there are some deaths at the end of this book. And um, that's all I'll say. Comes to a very climactic ending. I enjoyed rereading this, even though I haven't read it since 1989. Just so many years ago. God, how old am I now? Holy... No. Um, but anyway... But I was just a kid back then. Anyway, great book. I really enjoyed that. Like I said, I enjoyed this enough that I ordered, because I've got like 15 of the Rift Wars saga books, I ordered another at least 20 more that are in the series because to round out the series. But anyway, I like this. This is a great book. I give this a 9.5 out of 10.